The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everyone. Yes, so... <laughs> Oh, Holly couldn't be with us because she's probably passed out, unfortunately. Um, you know, things happen, and, and, and I don't know, she has her, you know, she has issues I think she's talked about on the show before. So, uh, hopefully, you know, she's sleeping okay. <laughs> because we all need to pass out every now and then. Just say, you know what, fuck the world. <laughs> mm. I tried to do that yesterday, but I just couldn't. Ugh. Oh, so uh, this past week, it's it's been a hell of a week, <laughs> especially in the news, but also, oh, 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 guess, guess, guess one good thing I got this week. Uh, what'd you get this week? Got a new patron. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Yes, got a new patron, Timothy Sheridan. If you're watching on the uh, video version, you'll see his name scrolling on by. He is a new patron, and we welcome him. It, he is awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Every little bit does help, and... Hey, boo-boo. Yes. <laughs> That's the voice you're doing right now. I... <laughs> I went yogi for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I hate it when that happens to me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> All of a sudden, I just stole some picnic baskets. <laughs> picnic baskets? Hey, boo-boo. How did these picnic baskets get in my bedroom? <laughs> oh, lordy. But uh, also a little bit on the site news. If you go to the site now, uh, the URL might be switch reverted back to the original WordPress one because it is a WordPress WordPress based site. That's temporary. Um, the I have the uh, WordPress Premium, which came with like domain mapping and some extra space and a few other things. Uh, that unfortunately went out because didn't have the money for it. But just to replace the the domain name mapping, that's going to be twenty bucks. And guess what's coming up in the next week? Patreon payment! Yay! I can cover it. <laughs> Huzzah! Uh, so good on me for that. Uh, so it'll be just a week. Probably by the time the next episode rolls around, it should be reverted back to where it should be. Or at least within a day or two, depending on how quick the Patreon payments get to me. Um, so, you know, if, if, you're, if you're listening to this and you're on the site and you say, Hey, wait a minute, what the fuck? That's why. Don't, don't need to be alarmed. <laughs> also, if you say, what the fuck, you're watching the wrong show. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so that was a couple of things that happened. Um, oh, God, what was – there was something – oh, yeah, we have a follow-up. We actually have a follow-up to a story. I think it was last week. You know, all those kids that just, uh, like, like just stormed the movie theater in Okoy, like, like in Florida? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was because of Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay. They all wanted to get in to see Fifty Shades of Grey. And it's like, what the fuck? Why? Why would you do that? There is free porn on the internet. There's free, yeah, porn that is not only free, but 90% of it is consensual. So, you know, it, it, it's ethically better to get porn on the internet. It's just from an ethical sense. Oh, it's like, God damn it, kids, what the fuck? Oh, and there was something, uh, actually something Becky brought up to me. I, I... I think it's the article itself is a little too long to put in the show, but uh, there was like a a movie festival recently, um, and this guy uh, by the name of Reblark Reblarch who posts who posted on the subreddit Kotaku in action, um, who which has been tied to Gamergate, but that's kind of like a, a, an offshoot thing. That's you know just to let you know what the, you know who these guys are if you don't already know. Um, he did an independent film called Loot. And it sucks. You know, he, he, he sent it into some film festival. Uh, Loot itself is like five minutes long. And it, it, it just sucks. It makes Birdemic and The Room look like Citizen Kane. All right? That's how well, bad it on. is. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I would rather watch Twilight than this, than this short film again. Because, yes, I, I, I did that. And, of course, it didn't win anything. It, it was panned. And you know who he blamed it on? He blamed it on so he, he blames the social justice agenda <sighs> for like, for his bad movie. Yeah, even though you know, I mean, 
It's, it's, it's just, dude, it's just a bad movie. The feminists are not out to get you. You just suck, all right? I mean, okay, I, I can I can see maybe you put in some hard work, maybe, um, but still, it, it sucked, man. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, being just as blunt as possible, you suck! Better your craft and try again next time. It's simple. Just all there is to it. It's a really childish thing to blame your failures on somebody else. Yeah. The only reason you should blame a failure on somebody else is if somebody else caused you to fail. Like, directly. Yeah, like if you're running a race and you're about to hit the finish line and somebody literally sticks a foot out and trips you. That you can blame on somebody else then, because the, the person who tripped you is an asshole. Oh. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Oh. Uh, but I've got a shout-out this week. Um, have you heard of Melissa Hunter? No. Okay. Have you heard of the series Adult Wednesday Adams? Uh, no. You have not. You must. It sounds like a porn, though. It is not. It is not a porn. It is simply just Wednesday Adams, as in the Adams Family Adams, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I used to get called that a lot. <laughs> really? I, I, in real life, when I was younger, I looked a lot more like Christina Ricci, and I had a coworker who called me Wednesday. I could see that. <laughs> And hey, you know what? Nothing wrong with that. But uh, Adult Wednesday Adams basically follows Wednesday as she just tries to integrate herself into modern society outside of her family. You know, she's striking out on her own, getting a boyfriend, going to an abortion clinic. Well, I, I say abortion clinic, a pan, pan, Planned Parenthood clinic for like some Plan B, you know, that sort of thing. And how she deals with these things. The latest one, I think it's the latest one, where uh, she deals with a bunch of guys who cat called her. So she got a bunch of uh, big burly men, and she went and visited those guys at their home. And I won't spoil what those big burly men did, but I will let you speculate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, if you want to find her, find her on YouTube uh, under a Hey Melissa Hunter, or just or just look up Adult Wednesday Adams. Or if you're on Tumblr and everywhere, the the, the uh, word about this series is spreading around. She's on her second season right now, uh, so it's like. Yeah, I think it's like about ten episodes now. I want to say, not quite sure, but um, but yeah, go check her out. It's really, it's a really fun series. Oh, and I'm I'm gonna take a guess here. You don't have a shout out. Uh, I I'd like to give a shout out to my roommate who just dropped a bunch of shit in the kitchen right next to my bedroom Oops. where I record. <laughs> and I was like, God, <laughs> I hope the mic doesn't pick that up. <laughs> well, well, I personally didn't hear it, so. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I just heard a bunch of stuff like falling, and I'm like, oh, that's nice. Okay, Oops. hope nothing's broken in there. <laughs> I hope so too. I hope so too. That would be horrible. Oh. <laughs> oh, and it's a good thing we're getting a lot of this laughing out of the way now because our first news story. Oh my god. Infuriation train. Everybody aboard. Yes, hop on. We're going on the infuriation train. And I, I want to start by saying that when I was reading this to my girlfriend last night, she kept quoting about – she kept remarking, rather, that this just keeps getting worse and worse, and it's like they're, they're going for the gold medal in the horrible Olympics. You'll understand why as we read, or at least as I read. Oh. Parents seeking help with children with autism are turning to a quote-unquote miracle cure – that involves giving the children enemas using a dangerous industrial solution used for bleaching wood pulp. Uh -huh. Okay, well, mm. that's nice. Yeah. According to If You Only News, parents have turned to Miracle Mineral Solution, MMS, not to be confused with sending pictures over your phone, by the way, containing sodium chloride, not chloride, chlorite, which is mixed with citric acid, like orange juice, to make chlorine dioxide. According to the promoters, the solution, which can be taken orally or administered via an enema, can cure, get this, HIV, malaria, hepatitis, autism, acne, and cancer. Wow, that is a miracle. That would be a miracle, yeah. Uh huh. Jesus couldn't cure HIV, like wow. Yeah. 
Oh, Miracle Mineral Solution is the brainchild of Jim Humble, who quit the cert who quit the okay. Church of Scientology to form the Genesis II Church of Health and Healing in order to promote his miracle cure in Africa and Mexico. He quit Scientology to do this shit. Wow. He, I mean, you go from one level of crazy to a whole new level of crazy. Yes. It's like, what the fuck, dude? And he's, and he's promoting this in Mexico and Africa, places with predominantly brown people. Well, well, that's because in America we have higher standards for uh, what can can be sold. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like the Food and Drug Administration. They disagree with Humble's claims, and they've posted a warning on their website calling the product dangerous and potentially life-threatening. Well, no shit. To say the least. Mm -hmm. Advising drinking the amount recommended on product labels can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and symptoms of de severe dehydration. Yeah, and I would also believe that they would cause death if, if taken way too much. Additionally, the Environmental Protection Agency warns that chronic exposure to small doses of chlorine dioxide could result in reproductive and neurodevelopmental damage, and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration has issued guidance in the use of chlorine dioxide in the workplace. So all you parents that actually take this thing seriously and shoot this shit up your kids' asses, yeah, then your kids are not going to be autistic anymore after a while, sure. They're also probably going to be brain dead. At the at least in the worst case scenario. Oh my god. Ugh. And there's more. Carrie Rivera, founder of the website C D Autism. Autism. Avoidable, treatable, curable. Yeah, we know <laughs> yeah. Uh uh uh, 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 uh curable. Uh huh uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um last I checked, isn't autism genetic? I mean it, it is many things, and curable is not among them. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, yes, she promotes MMS, and she claims that autism is caused by yeast, parasites, viruses, and, oh boy, vaccines that can be flushed from the body. Yeah, because nobody there ever read a science textbook or anything. Apparently. On her Facebook page, Rivera, who identifies herself as a biomedical consultant and certified homeopath, keeps a running total of parents who have contacted her, saying MMS has cured, quote-unquote, cured their children of autism. Because their children are fucking vegetables. Um, <laughs> because they're dead. Yeah. One parent wrote, I just wanted to tell you great news that we have received yesterday from bioresonance diagnostic treatment. We went there actually for the first time just to check how we've improved with CD, which my six year old six years old son has been using it for a year and a half now. And she said, I don't know what, what are doing, but just keep doing what you're doing because you're doing great. She couldn't find viruses, bacteria, parasites, yeast. His body has been cleaned a lot, also from heavy metals. She did saw a virus of measles inside the intestine. That's because of the vaccines he got. We will try to treat that now. And, of course, not stopping CD and parasite protocol. By the way, there's a lot of fucking typos in this. And this is a quote, so so it, it's, not the new, it's not the news article. It's a quote from an actual parent. Uh, let's see. We are starting also with GCMAF in October and can't wait. We are really happy. Yeah. Um. If 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 I I yep. Yeah, uh, uh, you're shooting shit up your kid's ass. That that's not that's not good. Uh. And and actually, you know this can't be real because you're t you're telling me that. You went and took your child to some place and they couldn't find any kind of viruses or bacteria in the child's body, your child would be dead. Your your entire body is filled with bacteria. Not all bacteria is bad. It it helps you digest and all of this other stuff. If you're saying your child is entirely bacteria free, I'm going to assume that your child does not actually exist. Yeah. Either that or your child is going to be leaving this mortal plane very, very soon. Oh, other parents report that they are still continuing treatments despite extreme vomiting, kicking, and hysterics when enemas are being administered. Well, oh shit, there's going to be kicking and hysterics. Because if a kid gets a shot up the ass that causes him to vomit five times a day, of course they're not going to want any more. Because what you're doing is hurting your child. Ugh. 
fucking idiots. Right. And, and and I double check because sometimes stories like this they're, they're either blown out of proportion or or they're from some satire site or what have you. No, I went to check. Oh my God, people actually do this, or they're at least saying they're doing this. And of course, the ones that say they're doing this, they're causing people to actually go out and do this. Folks, again, <coughs> excuse me. Oh God, it's starting to get to me. Uh, the, 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 this this whole anti-vax thing, because I know, because see, there's the, the whole vaccine thing in there too. Bet you she's an anti-vaxxer. Ac vaccines do not cause autism. They they help with herd immunity to help keep people that otherwise can't get a vaccine from getting sick. <coughs> oh, sick. Maybe you should go get vaccinated for something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, vaccinated for a dry throat, because holy shit. <laughs> oh, lordy. But, yeah. What, what's crazy is that these are people who aren't willing to uh, put a vaccine in their child's body because it contains unnatural substances, um, but they're willing to shove unnatural substances up their child's ass? Is that yeah. really the world of logic? Apparently. Apparently to them, because, hey, you know. What's, what, uh, let's see. What is it? Let's see. It is sodium chloride and citric acid. I don't know about you, but I don't think sodium... I, I don't know what sodium chloride is exactly. I know it's some kind of chlorine thing, but I don't think it, occur, it occurs naturally in nature. Orange juice? Okay, you can I, just get that from an orange, but... I mean, it like, these things probably do occur in nature, but it's the same sort of stuff that occurs in nature that they don't want to put their in their kids' bodies like they would a vaccine. Like, like yeah. these things are made to help. These things that they're talking about are just bullshit. It is. It is It is a thing full of bullshit, and people are, uh, and, and it, obviously people are going around and doing this and believing it, otherwise we wouldn't have an article here. It was just, what the fuck, people? Just... It's just so scary because it's, n like, if you want to shove an enema up your ass to clean your system, fine, whatever. Make your bad choices. But people are doing this to their children. Yeah. That's so fucked up. And, like... again, and, the, ki and the kids know it's fucked up. That's why they're kicking and screaming. And if you have overwhelming evidence that tells you that this is a bad idea, you would think you would listen to the overwhelming evidence. You would think. But it's it's like the same thing, like, about, uh, say, Republicans who don't believe in global warming or, or uh, you know, environmental changes. It's like, the, the evidence is overwhelming, and you know you've been lied to. People have admitted to lying about, you know, the this sort of thing. Why would you not listen to the science? Uh, because it's not religious. It's not from Jeebus. Jeebus didn't say it, so it's not true. Aye. Oh Lord. Makes it, it make it makes people who who are of decent intelligence and realize how much bullshit is being spewed from their their particular religion, makes them want to just facepalm themselves into a Mack truck. Aye. But now we, we kind of have like a, a, a trio of kind of themed stories to kind of lighten the mood a little bit. Um, and, and the theme is Wiener, basically. Okay, let's, yes. uh, let's go with that theme then. Yes, and take a shot. This is Florida. Surgeons in Florida have, giving a, have given rather a 17-year-old boy what's being called the world's first penis reduction surgery. Oh, my. The teen came to doctors complaining of a penis too large for intercourse, according to, the, to an article in the Journal of Sexual Medicine, published online in November. He was also unable to play sports or even wear most clothing without his phallus showing through the fabric. His, wow. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. The penis was 7 inches long and had a circumference of 10 inches. It's about the same size as an average mayonnaise jar based on measurements taken by HuffPost Weird. Oh, my God. His penis had inflated like a balloon, uh, according to Raphael Carrion, a urologist at the University of South Florida who treated the patient. The shape and massive size of the penis was the result of the teen's sickle cell anemia. Irregular blood cells would block the penile blood vessels and lead to swelling and priapism, a long-lasting and painful erection. Ouch! 
This had happened three times since the boy was 10, which had progressively led to a deformed penis, according to the journal. Garion said he couldn't find any precedent for penis reduction surgery. His Tim team ended up opting to slice along the patient's circ circumcision scar, unwrap the skin, and then remove the chunks of tissue from each side. Jeebus, that's detailed. Wow, I could really have stood to not hear the details of that. Yeah. How that surgery went. I, I think everybody else can say that too, and I think I can too when I've read it. I don't even have one, and I feel like I'm going to vomit. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sitting here kind of cross-legged a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he added that the teen is very satisfied with his new penis, which is still generous in size, but is now more standard in appearance. One word to sum up this entire article. Ouch. Oh, oh I'm, I'm glad the kid's okay, though. Yeah, that's uh. good. I'm going to throw up now. Yeah. <laughs> well, she throws up. Um, we'll, 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 we'll head over to Oklahoma. <laughs> there she goes. Oh, dear. Ugh. Oh, so this one's out of Oklahoma. Talk about a close call. An Oklahoma man says he nearly lost his penis when he woke up to find his girlfriend trying to bite it off. That is a wake-up call I hope I never have. What the fuck? Was she really hungry or something? <laughs> a night of drinking and arguing led to the painful arousal when the victim said he found Amber Ellis biting his penis off as he slept on the couch Thursday. He told Tulsa police he fought the 31-year-old off, but in the process, she hit him in the head with a laptop computer. Their earlier argument was over his accusing of her being too needy, he said. You're too needy! Oh, I'm too needy? I'll just bite your dick off then. Proportionate <laughs> response, lady. Uh, he was hospitalized and given several stitches to the base of his penis, as well as treatment for injuries to his head, face, neck, fingers, and knee. Ellis was booked into the Tulsa County Jail on charges of maiming and assault with a dangerous weapon, and she is being held on $45,000 bond for both charges. Jeebus! Holy shit, bitches be crazy. I know, right? Ah! And you know what? I, I, I found this interesting. I, I don't have the picture on hand right now, but I actually saw, you know, you know how articles like this have like a mugshot picture or whatever yeah. of the person? And usually somebody like this, you'd think they'd be like kind of like older, you know, kind of scraggly looking, or, or at the very least, you know, be kind of be something that most people would look at and be like, why would somebody fuck her? And let me guess, she's really pretty. She is! She's cute. It's like, what the fuck? Why did, why, why did you one guy be crazy? Ah, oh, because I will never put my dick in her. Well, I mean, you, you probably wouldn't put your dick in her to begin with. No, I wouldn't anyway, because, hey, you know what? Um, no. I definitely wouldn't get a blowjob from her. Just no. Sorry, no. No. Oh, because she was accused of being too needy. Uh, it's like, you know, you, you, people fight. People in relationships fight all the time. If, if you're being accused of being too needy, the response is not to try and bite a part off of them. That you, you don't do that. L let's be honest. No matter what you're being accused of, the response is not to bite people's genitals. Yeah, let's let's not do that. Because, you know, we, we kind of need them. <laughs> Just a little bit, because guess what? After he breaks up with you, because now he probably is very much going to break up with her. If he doesn't, he is a bigger man than I. Um, then, then you know what? There are going to be others, male or female. I don't know this guy's sexuality. And, you know, he may want to have a working penis for that. And even then, guys, we, our penises are also tied into urination. Because we pee out of that thing. So we kind of need to have it. Oh, just jeebus. And the last last of our wiener trio, which does not involve an actual penis for once, Enola, Pennsylvania. Traffic was unusually slow Sunday in East Pennsboro Township after a reported incident involving an Oscar Mayer wienermobile. Oh, I heard about that. <laughs> the vehicle reportedly slipped off the roadway near the intersection of State Road and Fairview Avenue, slamming into a pole and smashing the windshield. No injuries were reported, but spectators claimed their baloney had a first name, and it was spelled C-R-A-S-H. <laughs> and that is the only reason this story made it. <laughs> I can hear the collective groans from everybody listening. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We'll be here all night. Yes. 
Yeah, and and a lot of the times I do grab them off of FARC, and sometimes the headlines are really, really cute. I happen to grab this one, and it says, Who among us hasn't lost control of a slippery wiener amongst the snowy mounds? And I'm willing to bet most everybody thought of what exactly you would think I would be thinking of. For those playing the home game, that has something to do with sex. I think they know. Yeah, I think they do too. Ah, uh, yeah, so penis, 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 penis. There. The moral of the story is penis. Yes! <laughs> you see, better to stick a penis up your ass than, than a, a, a sodium chloride uh, enema. Or whatever the fuck that, that thing is. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. Ah, hmm. uh, out of Miami. Take another shot. A Florida man is facing nearly three years in prison for punching a federal law enforcement officer. A Miami jury last week convicted 67-year-old Lark Sudeth of assault on a federal law enforcement officer. Judge, U.S. Judge District Lone, Joan rather, Leonard scheduled sentencing for April 6th. Trial testimony showed that Sudeth was in a, sec, a security line. Ah, my, 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 my tongue is just wanting to do what it wants. He was in a security line at a downtown Miami federal building when he began loudly complaining about the wait time, like you do. Officers repeatedly told Sudeth to calm down and stop cursing, and then decided to remove him from the building, which is their right. Security cameras captured Sudeth punching an officer in the face. His defense was that he was justified in throwing the punch because the officer used excessive force. Witnesses testified that excessive force was not used. And we all know how witnesses are. If the cops are fucking up, they're going to say, yeah, the cops are fucking up. Indeed. Yeah, so um, yeah, if it wasn't for that, I would be questioning. But this is pretty clear. Dude, this is not the time to say fuck the police. You're being an ass. They're treating you accordingly. Shut the fuck up. It's it's just one of those things. And in, and in and in an era where a lot of the news involving the police, at least that makes it onto this show or on what the fuck or what have you, involve the police being fuck ups, this is one of those where, you know what? The police are not in the wrong. You know, guy punched him, he's in jail. You know? So there you go. Ah. But now we go out west to Montana. Helena, Montana where a lawmaker is trying to make the state's indecent exposure law include yoga pants. But why? Representative David Moore said introduced House Bill 365, yes, that is how it's written, uh, on Tuesday in the House Judiciary Committee. He said the bill is in response to a group of nude bicyclists who participated in a group bicycle ride through the city of Missoula back in August. Oh no, people riding their bikes naked. Whatever shall we do? But why? This is obviously the worst possible thing that could ever happen. I know, right? Oh, no! My kids might see a boob! No, they... I, I imagine naked bicycle riding is more painful for the bicyclist than anything else. Probably. I, I can barely ride a bicycle clothed. Shit! Let alone... No, 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 no. My you ass know is what? too I'm wide for that. Bad. I'm actually kind of impressed. Yeah. Oh... The proposed bill would drastically expand the existing indecent exposure law to include any sort of exposed nipples, including men's, or any clothing that gives the appearance or simulates buttocks, general genitals, pelvic area, or female nipple. That means men can wear shirts with fake nipples, but women cannot. Neither can go topless for any reason, again, including men, and yoga pants that reveal the shape of one's buttocks are completely prohibited. Okay, I have a question. What about form-fitting jeans? Because I'm willing to bet that there are plenty of women up there that that wear the really tight, form-fitting jeans that show off just the curvature of their asses very, very nice. Or what about women who may not have much of a choice? They, they have asses that can barely fit into jeans, and by that nature alone, hey, guess what? It's going to fit to their ass because it's just that big. They got the booty. They yeah. can't hide the booty. They cannot hide the booty. Uh. This is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I get that there are some really, like, Puritan people out there who really, 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 really loved the 1950s. 
Um, but we're not there anymore. We're just, we're not, we're past it. It's done. It's over with. Stop trying to make the world like it used to be because it's not. And uh, trying to tell people what they can wear is, um, that's insane. It's absolute madness. Mm-hmm. Uh. And and he stated openly after the indu- introduction of the bill that yoga pants should be illegal, illegal in public anyway. The Missoula Republican representative, of course he's Republican, said that he even agreed with people being arrested for wearing provocative clothing. Well, well, if he has his way, you know, you would be arrested for wearing something that shows cleavage. It just kills me that this is the the. We hate big government, and big government is trying to control too much of our lives, party. And and yet they want to decide what you can and cannot wear. Yeah, what you can and cannot wear, who you can and cannot fuck, what you can and cannot do with your body, if you're female. Who you can and cannot marry. Exactly. It's like, yeah. It's, it's like, too big to control everything else, but just small enough to fit in your home. Yeah, and exactly. In your home, in your uterus, wherever. All of your crevices. Mm-hmm. All up in your uh, your provocative man nipples. Yes, my very provocative man nipples. Woo. <laughs> uh, he added that he trusts police officers to use their discretion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. It's just, just no, they, they, they wouldn't be able to because I'm willing to bet one of two things are going to happen. One, people are going to get away with a lot of shit. Or two... They're going to be using that to harass people they don't like. And it's probably going to be both in the same day. With the same person. Uh, All over the place. All over the place. Oh, yeah, definitely. Walt Hill, a retired professor in Missoula, helped to draft HB 365. He said, I want Montana to be known as a decent state where people can live within the security of laws and protect their children and associates from degrading and indecent practices. Like Like yoga pants. Yeah. Which, God forbid, you might wear to, like, yoga. Uh-huh. Or maybe you just like wearing them out and about, you know? They cover everything. But, I mean, personally, I wouldn't wear them out in, at this time of year in Montana, because, hey, probably balls cold. But, you know, what's wrong with wearing yoga pants? Nothing. You know? I think indecent exposure laws are, are you know, are far beyond their use anyway. Uh, you know? If you're doing something bad with your genitals, that's a different story. But just showing them off, yeah, whatever, you know? It's like, okay, I don't want to look at that, so I look away. It's really that simple. You don't need a law for that. Well, see, you kind of do, though. Because, okay, so for example, what if you there were no indecency laws, mm-hmm. and everybody was allowed to walk around naked if they wanted? Okay. And now imagine you're on a really, really cramped subway. Right. And there's a lot of children. Well, they would be... The, well, they would be kind of eyeing some genitals. They're like, hi. <laughs> they might get a little too close to the genitals, and then you run into problems with, uh, this kid just accidentally touched somebody's genitals. Yeah. Well, see, and that's the thing. Accidents do happen. Hell, they could accidentally touch, granted, covered, they could accidentally cut, t- touch your genitals anyway. Granted, they're covered, but still. You know, you know when you're in closed spaces, that's bound to happen. What I'm saying is, is it's, it's. I don't think it's necessarily a good idea for everyone to be walking around naked because we have laws in place to keep children protected. Yeah. And let's say you were allowed to, oh, let your children walk around naked because, again, no decency laws. Right. How is that not child? Well, I guess it's not child pornography unless you're filming it. But yeah. You can't necessarily protect them from the gazes of perverts and stuff. Yeah, and I can see that. I can see that as well. But my mind, my mind instantly jumps to the well. They're just looking defense, but it's like, wait, this is also children we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's one of those where it's like, it's not actively harming. I don't think, especially if if it's just, if they're just looking. But at the same time, it's creepy as fuck. It's one of those kind of arguments for me. It's like, so it's like, ah. So I, I guess, I guess, I guess, in terms of that, just like take baby steps towards different things, like you know, certain places you could be nude or wherever, and some certain places you really shouldn't be, that sort of thing. You know, there, there's room for compromise on this one, I think. 
is, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, in, in decency, in in these kinds of laws, there is room for compromise. Yeah. Um, and and this guy, this senator, who whatever this guy is, is really, really, really out of touch with how the world works and doesn't yeah. really understand what decency is now. Yeah. And and oh, here here's the last part of this article. Currently. If a person is convicted of indecent exposure three times in Montana, they could literally be sentenced to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Jesus. So you get in trouble for flashing your dick three times. doesn't matter what the situation is. You get in trouble for that three times, you spend the rest of your life in prison. Maybe you should stop flashing your dick everywhere, though, seriously. Yeah, and even then, you know... Like I said, no matter the, situ the situation, it could have been an accident, or he could have just been flashing his dick to flash his dick. Or maybe he was walking around in his house, and the window was open for whatever reason. Maybe he forgot to close the window or whatever, and somebody looked in. Because I've heard of people getting in trouble for doing that. Yeah, that's that. happened before. Yeah. So, you know, it could be something like that. You know, there, there, there's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of area where that could fall in. It's like, ugh, ugh. But this particular bill is more lenient, according to Moore, because it lessens that provision to include a maximum five years in jail and $5,000. Just. Uh, but you still can't wear yoga pants. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck, guys? I mean, I mean, like, like I said, with the with the indecency, indecency exposure laws, a lot of room for compromise. I think, you know, more people should be just, you know, if you're nude. And you're not bothering anybody, then you know what? Who cares? You know, just there. There's a time and a place for everything, and you know, people just need to know what those times and places are. And you know, to use your subway example, I I wouldn't be nude in a subway personally, unless I absolutely had to. But <laughs> which I don't see much of a of a need for that. But but odds what are would I wouldn't. What be the circumstance in which you absolutely had to be naked on a subway? Your car got stolen. You had to get across town. Going to a nudist convention. Going to a nudist. Convention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a whole bunch of naked people coming up from a New York subway, <laughs> and everybody around them is like, "Wait, what the fuck?" There's already like naked jogging and stuff in New York. Yeah, and, so... and, and that's fine. <laughs> Whatever, man. Hey, hey you know. I, uh, I think a, a lot of my my hesitation with uh, letting naked people go go around is is mostly having to do with children. Like, parents have the right to raise their children how they wish, yeah, and uh, they have the right to decide when it's okay for their children to learn about naked bodies and stuff. And so, exposing them to naked bodies is not the worst possible thing that you can do. But I feel like the parent is the one who gets to decide that. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, and and you know what? Maybe in about maybe twenty years, both of us will be singing different tunes. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, it it could change. And you know, like this is this is one of the things about why I watch a lot of anime is that there's a lot of stuff in it that America would consider indecent for children to watch, but apparently it's okay in Japan because they can get over it, and children are better at dissociating uh, fantasy from reality and stuff like that over yeah. there versus here. So. It's, it's kind of weird how okay with it it is for some cultures and not okay with it is for other cultures. Yeah, like like I'm remembering back a very early episode of Pokemon where they were they had like this like like the warden of the Safari Zone just like sit there and like point point a gun right in Ash's face. That episode has never aired over here. Turned out to be one where Ash caught a whole bunch of Pokemon too, but but there's that Team Rocket had guns being pointed everywhere. It's like holy shit, a whole shit ton of a shit ton of gunplay. Never aired over here. And yeah. Because it's like, oh, no guns in a kid's show. It's like, guys, we, we, you know, do you realize some of the other kid's show we have grown up with? All right? We have grown up with, with, uh, we grew up with fucking G.I. Joe, all right? And, and fucking He-Man. Okay, He-Man. He yeah. You know, and, and Super Mario Brothers, Captain N, you know? Ah. Uh, so it's, it's not like that, it's not like kids can't be, in introduced to all of this stuff. Hell, Looney Tunes! There you go! Uh, Looney Tunes are pretty much timeless, for the most part. Mm. I say for the most part because there are some that are more... Eh, yeah, product of their times. Mm. 
So anyway, we got kind of off track there. Yes, we did, didn't we? Well, that's okay. A Northwest Indiana Republican has backtracked on outrageous comments he made on Facebook about poor people. John Johnston, who is challenging Democratic State Representative Chuck Mosley for the 10th District seat, said during a social media discussion on poverty that no one has the guts to let, just let them wither and die. Wow! Yeah! I, you know, there's something about how a lack of empathy for other people is a sign of being a sociopath or a psychopath or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the Valparaiso resident told the Post Tribune on Tuesday that his comments were simply hyperbole, and he told the paper no thoughtful society would allow people to go hungry. Bullshit! <laughs> Have you been to America? Yeah, I mean, hi. How how many people are out there right now going hungry because of one reason or another? Maybe because they can't really get on food stamps, or if they are on food stamps, it's not enough to cover for the month. So, you know, and, and, and of course... They, they, they give, what, like, what, 100, 200 at most, maybe at best? I'm not too familiar with food stamps right now, um, you know, per month. And for just a single person, sure, you know, I could probably subsist on 200 a month just buying food from the grocery store. I probably could do it. But a lot of people on food stamps are families, you know, three, four, five-person families, you know. Children. Children are the highest. Uh, level of people starving in this country or children. Yeah, and why? Because the government wants to cut all this kind of bullshit because we don't want to help the poor people. They need to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. God, every time like I hear that phrase, I just want to punch somebody in the kidney. Yeah, I don't blame you. You, you get the kidney, I'll get him in the balls. Right. <laughs> there you go. And, and I will, and I will try not to hit you, cause I will try to, I will try to aim just well enough to where we, I, I hit the balls while you hit the kidney, and we don't accidentally hurt each other. Well, we can go one at a time. Like, there we you go. take him down, the crippling part will be the balls, and then we take him in the kidney, and that just, you know, yeah. adds more pain to it. And you just slowly tear this person apart. Yes. Yeah. Hypothetical person. There you go. Or, or even better, you remember the scene in Baby's Day Out where? Uh, oh, honestly, no, I've never seen this film. You've never seen it. Okay, no. there's a part where where the titular baby, he he, you know, the the guys had kidnapped him, and he they're hiding from him in, under like a coat in the park or whatever. He gets a hold of the main bad guy's lighter, and he just flip somehow flicks the lighter on and leaves it right in the guy's crotch. Mm. And so of course, once once the once once they're in the clear and the baby's gone. You know, he, he pulls the jacket off, and he screams, and one of his henchmen throws him on the ground, and he starts stamping out the fire. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. That, that is what I would like to do, minus the fire, to people who, who think like Mr. Johnston here. <clears throat> and, he said, and he said, I was not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I saw the opportunity to say something. I think a lot of the poor have no way out, and there's no motivation to improve your position. It's like training a child. Either you enable them or force them out at some point. Okay, if there's no way out, it's because of people like you, motherfucker. It's because of people like you. All right? And people who, who, I mean, shit, I can't even get hired on at McDonald's. All right? That's the, that's what's horrible. And in fact, I couldn't even get an interview with them unless I said I had no work experience. So you either have no work experience or you have too much and and there's just no middle ground for some people. So, yeah, if there's no way out, it's not their fault. This is one of those things where it is not their fault. Ugh. I was just reading a Correct.com article last night about, like, five things rich people need to stop saying, and I'm pretty sure this guy's nailed most of that article. Oh, he probably has. Oh, lordy. I just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I could go on, but we got we got to head back to Oklahoma because this one I know has been making the rounds, and I bolded a whole lot of this because it's just that goddamn important. Oklahoma City. Some op opponents of Common Core apparently have now turned their guns on advanced placement courses. The legality of teaching advanced placement courses in Oklahoma public schools was raised Monday during a House Common Education Committee, a committee hearing rather on a bill aimed at the AP U.S. History Guidelines. That measure, House Bill 1380, by Representative Dan Fisher, Republican from Yukon, would direct the State Board of Education to review those guidelines and bar the use of state funds for AP U.S. history courses. During discussion, what? yeah, during 
discussion and debate, however, it was suggested that AP courses are similar to Common Core and that they could be construed as an attempt to impose a national curriculum on American schools. Oh no, anything but that! Uh, what? It, you know, heaven forbid we hold all of the kids in every fucking state to the same goddamn standard. First off, an, an advanced placement course, as far as I know, is supposed to prepare you for an advanced placement test. Which basically just helps you get college credits. I don't know for certain, but that's how AP classes worked when I was taking them. I believe that's how they worked when I was in school, too. I don't think I took one. I might I have. I don't remember. But I took several, and that's how they all worked. It's it's a class. Simply, you learn stuff that other people who were in, like, normal, let's say, history class would be taking. But they you, you take it specifically to prepare for the AP exams, which just gets you college credit while you're still in high school. It's pretty sweet, actually. It made me going to college a lot easier. There you go. It was also suggested that AP courses violate the legislation approved last year that repealed Common Core with State Representative Sally Kern, Republican from Oklahoma City, saying she has asked the State Attorney General's office on for ruling on the matter. That legislation gives sole control of curriculum and assessment to the state, although it was not immediately clear whether the requirement applies to all courses or only to required courses. Although HB 1380 specifically targets U.S. history, a ruling that it violates state law related to curriculum and assessment could apply to all AP courses. Advanced Placement is a nationally recognized series of courses and tests developed by the College Board, a private entity, with the assistance of high school and college faculty that allows high school students to earn college credit, you know, like you said. It is not required for high school graduation, and public schools do not have to offer it. Fisher, who has been active in a church and state organization called the Black Robe Regiment, said the U.S. Well, that sounds like a satanic fucking cult right there. It does. <laughs> oh. She said the, I think, yeah. So the US AP, AP U.S. History course framework emphasizes what is bad about America. And there's your reasoning why they want to target the AP U.S. History. Right there. Because they don't want our kids thinking badly about America. They don't want our kids to know that as Americans, guess what? We were founded by a bunch of fucking white slave owners. All right? I just wanted to do what they wanted to do. They didn't consider women or, or anybody that was not white and and in and, and – well, okay, I don't want to say Christian because yeah, they, they weren't Christian. But, but definitely people who were not white men as equal. When they say all men were created equal, what they were meaning at the time, white men. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Larry Krieger, a teacher who spoke to the committee via conference call, implied that the AP framework was created by some of the same people responsible for Common Core. Um, isn't Common Core, like, not really an old thing or anything like that? I, don't, I, th I think it's kind of a new thing. I, th I thought Common Core was fairly recent, mm -hmm. and AP's been around for a while. Yeah, you know, at least it's from when we were in high school, and hell, probably even when uh, Josh Hadley was in high school. You know? That, that gives you a good 20, 30 years to work with here. Give or take. Uh, both said the framework omits the concept of American exceptionalism. Because, again, never mind that America has had a major war for, throughout most of its life. You know, I, I think at one point when Carlin was talking about it on stage, it was like once every 20 years or something, and we've had a few more since then. We're a warlike people. So, you know, but hey. Welcome to the human race. Yeah. Um, honestly. Yeah, this so, is true. So that's their whole beef is that they don't think uh, that they teach enough American exceptionalism. Yeah, they don't, they don't teach their kids to suck enough cock for America, basically. Or because basically, if you understand the reality of America not being the greatest country in the world and the history of everything, then you're unpatriotic. Well, then I guess I'm unpatriotic because I don't think America is the greatest nation in the history of everything. I think we're all right. I think we can do a hell of a lot better, but we're not the greatest nation in the world. And we're not going to be if we keep having assholes like this trying to tell kids that we are the greatest when we're in fact not. It, it's it's sort of like the idea of 
rewriting the history books to make your country sound better, which is something that we criticize other countries for doing. Yeah, because, hey, you know what? That's America for you. Criticize one thing while doing that same goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. You know, America, I, 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 I'm, I might be able to actually say that America, dare I say it, might be run by hypocrites. Oh, dare you say it? Oh, dare I say it? In fact, can I it be say said it. in such a way? Yes, in fact, in fact, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? Prove me wrong. Uh, oh, lordy. Oh God. So, after all that, we we still. There was a little bit of a religious touch, which is going to tie into this next one. Oh, this week on the 700 Club, Pat Robertson, oh, our old friend, fielded a question from a viewer who wondered if she should be worried about her pregnant daughter posting fetal ultrasound photos on Facebook. Okay, you know, you know, woman's concern, sure, you know, privacy issues. Okay. Robertson, giving an answer that sounds more like a bad sequel to Rosemary's Baby, warned that the woman's daughter may be setting her family up to be cursed by a Facebook-savvy satanic coven. Because that's what they do, right? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> because, yeah, because apparently these satanists have nothing better to do than go on Facebook, look at a random person, be like, yeah, we're going to curse that motherfucker. We're going to make frogs rain from his ceiling. Every time he utters the word shish kebab. We don't know why we're choosing shish kebab, but we're going to go with it. He may never say it. So that means we're kind of, we kind of suck. <laughs> I don't think there's any harm in it, he said. But I tell you, there are demons and there are evil people in the world. And you post a picture like that and some cultist gets a hold of it or a coven and they begin muttering curses against an unborn child. You never know what somebody's going to do. Well, oh my God, does he actually believe in witches and shit? Apparently, like like stereotype, like hey, 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 like green skin and warty nose kind of witches. I wouldn't be surprised, but you know what? I would not. I would not mind, if, if, you know, like like going to his house with with a bunch of people dressed that way just to freak him the fuck out. Because <laughs> that would be awesome. And it also, and he also said in the previous Facebook related query that he wished he could click a vomit button when he saw pictures of gay people. Yeah, just to remind you that he is homophobic as fuck. Well, I mean, maybe he should stop looking for pictures of gay people. Yeah, I mean, hey, guess what? I, you know, I, I, I can't really handle Five Nights at Freddy's. So you know what I do? I don't play the fucking game. I don't watch people. Let's play the fucking game. Problem solved! You know? It's, it's, it's the same principle, dude. Uh, but seriously, somebody cursing a unborn child, sure, whatever, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Why, what, 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 what would they get out of it? Nothing. Because I think, because I think what he's getting at, like, you know, this whole witchcraft thing, I don't know if it's just Wicca or if it's all kinds of, you know, magical witchcraft like that or what have you, that has the rule of three. I think it's the rule of three. Where if you curse somebody, it's going to come back on you three times. You know, like like three times as potent. Like, like say I curse you to have diarrhea for one day, it'll come back on me, and I'll have diarrhea for three days. I know, very shitty example, no pun intended, but, but... every pun intended. <laughs> okay, maybe you're right, but uh, but but I hope, but I hope I hope it gets the point across. Uh, but yeah, so odds are they're not going to do that unless they that, unless they're just really really bad. Also, you know what? Here's the truth. Mm -hmm. The hard truth is nobody gives a shit about your baby. Uh, with the exception of your immediate family, everybody tells you that they're really happy about your kid, but nobody cares because nobody really likes babies. Yeah. Well, no, I like babies. I no, just... I hate I, babies. Yeah. See, I like babies to a degree because they are cute. They are adorable. I don't think babies are cute. Well, but at the same time, we don't... You know, it's like again going back to George Carlin. I've been on a I've been on a Carlin kick lately. Nobody cares about your children. That's why they're your children. So you care about them, and we don't have to bother. Exactly. <laughs> oh lordy. Uh, Nessa. It, it, it's like how public displays of affection make people uncomfortable. Yeah. So do like tons of pictures of your kid all over the place. Yeah. Which again. You know, if it's on Facebook or whatever, you could just like, you know, I guess ignore posts 
like that. I I normally don't wor worry about it because eh, just let it roll off. But no, I I guess there's some kind of option for that. I hope. If not, there needs to be. There should be. Oh, but uh, going back to uh, Pennsylvania. I know this is Pennsylvania. Uh, Nescopec Township. Chickens are on the loose after a truck lost some of its load on the interstate. According to state police, crates of chickens blew off a tractor trailer on Interstate 80 in the area of Mile Marker 250 in Nescopec Township around 6.30 a.m. Thursday. Crates of chickens. Yes. <laughs> Authorities are not sure exactly how many chickens are displaced and are searching for the birds. Police say traffic on the highway near Nescopec are, is not affected. No, I know what really happened. The driver saw a little... A little elf boy in green beating up on a chicken, and he said, "Oh no, fuck that!" And he just, he just kind of sh sh shunted his uh, truck over and displaced all those chickens to go attack him. You know, when you need to beat Link, <laughs> it takes a chicken. Yes, it does. It really Maybe it, does. it had to do with the the Majora's Mask release or something. They're like, "There's now Links everywhere. He must be stopped." <laughs> he must. Oh my God. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, though, to to people who who are doing this, make sure your load is secure, please. <laughs> Otherwise, things like this happen. So this is this that's, is your friendly friendly uh, uh, truck driving advice from me. <laughs> that's actually good life advice. Yeah. Take it however you want. Make sure your load is secure. Mm -hmm. Take that in any way you desire. Yes, and I know half I know how half the people are taking that. <clears throat> just make sure that it's secure. Very much secure. Oh. Uh, and and don't just leave it lying around when you're done with it. Mm. All right, Harlan, Kentucky. Now I'm now I'm pretty sure this one heard every, everybody's heard this one as well. The cold might not bother Disney's Queen Elsa, but it's wrecking enough havoc in Kentucky that pol that a police department announced a joke warrant for the popular Frozen character's arrest. And that's the big that's the big key word in this article. Joke. Every other article I have seen talking about this. As far as I saw, did not make a mention that this was a joke warrant. Yeah. Police in the small rural town of Harlan posted a Facebook message Wednesday about Elsa. They wrote, Suspect is a blonde female, last seen wearing a long blue dress, and is known to person into song, Let It Go. As you can see by the weather, she is very dangerous. <laughs> Police soon posted another message, telling residents that all kidding aside, they should take the weather seriously and be careful. A massive system dropped more than a foot of snow in parts of Kentucky. Bitterly cold temperatures moved in Wednesday night and were likely to stay for several days. Bring some of that down here! God you damn! You can have it. You can fucking have it. Yes, please! I mean, it was kind of cold that past few days outside and it was fine, you know. Not as cold as it was up there. And if I was up in the middle of it, I would probably be complaining my ass off. But, you know, that's what I do. I complain about the weather. But you know what? Give some of it down here. Spread it out. You you can have it because I almost fucking wrecked my car this week. Oh yeah, I I read about that. Ouch. Uh, I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, my car less so, but you know we survived. Yes. Uh. Oh, uh, in our last news story, we're gonna end on a high note. Marijuana would be legalized for recreational purposes and taxed like tobacco and alcohol under new legislation in the House. The Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol Act, introduced fr reintroduced Friday by Representative Jared Paulus, a, de a Democrat from Colorado, would remove pot from a list of federally banned drugs. Meanwhile, the Marijuana Tax Revenue Act, a companion bill from Representative Earl Blumen Blumenauer from Oregon, also a Democrat, would establish a federal tax structure for recreational pot but not medical marijuana. It's not just the people who use marijuana, but a lot of other people are recognizing that it's insane to shuffle billions of dollars to Mexican, Mexican drug cartels when we could just be taxing it, he told The Hill. Blumenauer's bill would initially tax recreational marijuana at 10% and gradually raise the rate to 25%, but it would not tax mar medical marijuana at the federal level. The federal government could take could make $10 billion annually between the marijuana taxes it collects and the money it saves by not locking people up for possession of pot, Blumenauer, Blumenauer estimates. Why did he? Why did they have to focus on him? His name is really tough to pronounce. Uh, the federal prohibition of marijuana has been a failure, wasting tax dollars and ruining countless lives, he said. The marijuana bills, which were both in, re introduced Friday, while lawmakers were on recess, failed to gain traction in the last Congress, but Blumenauer believes pot politics is changing and even Republicans may be warming up to the idea. I hope so. Because I can, I can point out a few people that can really use some pot brownies. 
Uh, uh, there's little doubt in my mind that we've turned a corner on this, he said. Pot advocates say marijuana reform is long overdue. Tom Eng Engel, Angel, chairman of Marijuana Majority, said this legislation would stop drug warriors at the Drug Enforcement Administration from going after people who use pots in states where it is legal. It's time for our federal representatives to come to grips with the fact that marijuana is safer than alcohol and most people think it should be treated that way, said Danton Rilf, Riffle, F Director of Federal Policies for the Marijuana Policy Project. This is what I like to see. Ah, because, you know, federally legal pot, it, it, if this goes through and pot is legal on a federal level, would you partake? I probably wouldn't, no. No? no. I I want to try it, whether whether smoking it or, or a pot brownie or whatever. Um, I would not mind trying it because I want to see how I am, you know, like, like it, it, it's one of the, like, the reason like I got drunk the first time I ever did is because I wanted to see how I was. So and and I kind of like myself when I'm drunk, so I do it maybe once a month. Pot may be the same way. I would definitely give pot brownies to my mother. Then that way she doesn't have to be on whatever medication her doctors have her on. Uh, and and there are people you know that have like the chronic pain, uh, you know fibromyalgia. Uh, I know a friend who actually smoked pot at one point, and she said, you know what? The pain in my legs from the fibromyalgia, it was like nothing. It was all gone. I felt so good. And that's in, that's in addition to the high. So there, there's a lot more benefits for marijuana than there is pitfalls. Than there are pitfalls. Whatever. But, yeah. Ah. And, and, and I'm pretty sure that they are pretty much right. It's just like, yeah, you know, you make this legal, we're... You know, we could probably punch out any deficit that we have. So, so yeah. No shit, because it's so ridiculous to spend all of the money that we do arresting people for pot and incarcerating people for pot when it's it's not totally harmless, but it's way less harmful than some of the stuff that we allow to have happen. So. Mm -hmm. Why not just legalize it everywhere and make money off of it? What kind of capitalist nation are we? I know, right? It's like shit, man. Uh, you know, I want I want to go into a store and, and see like packs of uh, you know packs of marijuana blunts that you could get from get from behind the counter. <laughs> that would be awesome. Or or maybe you know prepackaged pot brownies. Not to mention that if you regulate it, you. You take away a lot of the risk of, you know, like bad batches and harmful versions and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know how bad it is for that, like other drugs. But it's like once you regulate it, you have better control over keeping it even safer. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so, so with all of that, yes, legalized pot, yes, please. Uh, and then I could have friends that could actually do pot and do it out in the open, and not have to worry about going to fucking prison. Oh, uh, uh, so that's our news, and I actually forgot to put something towards the front of the show, but I'm going to do it now. I actually, we got a couple of the uh, inbox uh, mails through the uh, Thespian Talk Tumblr this week. Uh, yes, uh, one of them is it's not a question, but it's just a statement, and they say, uh, ass violin is cool, but I prefer penis banjo. Penis banjo? Penis okay. banjo! Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and penises. There you go. Oh dear. Uh, Pretty sure there's a porn for that. Probably. They may call it cockfight. Cockfight. <laughs> and the other one I got asks, "What is your ethnicity?" And they spell it Y O U R E, not even a, not even an apostrophe. Um, future tip: um, You didn't need the E. And if you were going to write your as in you are, uh, there needs to be an apostrophe. Just a friendly tip. Uh, but my ethnicity, I'm a white guy. You know, I, I, I am a 300-pound white guy. All right? Uh, that's about it. Now, now, if you want to go back into, like, like genealogy, I think I've had family members, ancestors who are, like, Ind American Indian, you know, Native American, Irish, I think, is in there somewhere, you know, that sort of thing. But generally, I'm a white guy. And and I'm willing to bet. So white. Yeah, and I'm willing to bet you're even whiter than me. Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm super white, like so super white. <laughs> in in that I am incredibly pale. Yes. Um. 
like porcelain. Like I can't even find makeup for how white I am. It's yeah. really hard to find makeup that pale. Yeah. Um, I I am super super white American, but uh, <laughs> while I am American, I have lived all over the planet. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> white, but traveled. Yes. Well, well, hey, I mean, what, you you were. Let's see. I know I was born out of the country. I think you said you were born out of the country at one point, right? Yeah, yeah. Both my older brother and I. Uh, my brother was born in Scotland, and I was born in Japan. Yeah. So, so we were both born out of the country, but we're not Japanese and German, respectively. Right. We're, I we also are... lived in Germany. Yeah. What? Yeah. I wish I wish I'd been able to grow up in Germany a little bit there, get some of that culture in me, because I I want to go back and visit. Uh but that just that just means it's where we were born and and where we had lived. That's not our ethnicity. We're we're just a couple of whiteies. That's yep. all. It is true. Very much so. And um, so yeah, we got those answered. And with that, that is going to be the end of our show this week. Thank you guys for listening. If we wanted to find Cat on the social media, where could we find her? You could find me whiting it up, <laughs> <laughs> being generally pale, casting no shadows. So so pale. That's because I don't go outside. And also, when I do go outside, I just fry and burn yeah. like butter mm-hmm. i don't know i got nothing um <laughs> you can find me on my other show uh what the fuck over on 1201beyond.com and my other other show uh nerds of the third power over on channel awesome and this week in geek and we actually have our golden bacon awards coming up which is our our like our yearly award show similar to like the oscars but for nerd awards and that's coming up in the next couple of weeks so check it out it's gonna be really awesome golden bacon you know i had some bacon before we started recording i had some bacon last night as part of my dinner i made oh, waffles yes. with bacon oh I, I am jealous i am jealous we, we actually jealous. we actually had blts last night so it's like nice. yes we, we both baconed it up last night yay uh but so speak- what do white people like bacon yes I, I think bacon is one of those universal things like fried chicken I know, I know, you know like... what? I had bacon in Japan and it was terrible. Oh, really? Yeah, Aww. it was so disappointing. Aw. But, yeah, so if you wanted to find me on the social media, you can find me with all the bacon lovin' on uh, Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer21XX. Uh, you can find my Facebook fan page, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Um, you can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, both of which have their own Facebook pages and their own Tumblrs you can check out for updates and everything there. And if you're not already doing so, this show, along with my other podcasts, can be found on iTunes if you want. If you haven't subscribed, you know, feel free to do so. You'll get new episodes as they go live on the site. And you know, you don't even have to worry about going to the site, grab them. They just deliver right there to your iTunes. Just boom, you know? <laughs> and boom. Yes, and if they start falling behind, you can poke me and say, Hey, what the fuck, dude? Oh, uh, but, um, yeah, so that's about it. All the other information, like Patreon stuff, that's in the bumper, which... Oh, wait, there was somebody who recorded... Oh, yeah, that was you. <laughs> yeah, I do stuff. Yes, she does do stuff, and she does really great stuff with her voice. Um, You know, like record bumpers. Mm. So, anyways, that's enough rambling from me. Again, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit RTGomer.com for more great shows.